I toss my axe at the base of the log pile I've made and rush over to her. The snow doesn't make it easy, but when I get there, I roll her onto her back so I can make sure she's breathing. Her chest rising and falling sends relief flooding my system. Until I see what she's wearing. What the hell? Medium weight jacket. Jeans. Boots for fashion, not function. Thin gloves. Nothing covering her ears or head except the flimsy hood. She's insane to come out here dressed like this on a good day, let alone during a storm like this. She's literally freezing, and now unconscious. God damn it. This is the last thing I need when I'm trying to prepare to hunker down for the impending blizzard. I glance back through the trees in the direction from which she came. How the hell did she get out here anyway? The road, if one can even call it that, is two miles southeast of here, and some pretty heavy woods and terrain separate it from where we are now. It would be a wicked hike for someone prepared, let alone someone dressed like this in this weather. Sleeping Beauty must have some serious survival instinct and drive to make it this far. And as annoyed as I am about the intrusion, I'm not going to let the girl die on my watch. There's been too much unnecessary death already. Too much loss. She's not going out like this. Not if there's any possible thing I can do to save her. I slide my arms under her small frame and easily lift her from the snow. Her dead weight settles against my chest, and a gust of wind batters us with a blast of icy flakes. Memories come with it, swirling in my head the way the snow does around us. Another body in my arms. A hopeless struggle to survive. The look of death staring back at me. Dark, heavy warmth surrounds me. Like drowning in pitch black water, only it's not freezing like it should be. It's comforting. Safe. Somewhere I want to stay. Floating endlessly in the never ending abyss of darkness. Cocooned in its heat and secure hold. It's such a welcome change from what the world has been. Icy and terrifying. A deep, bone-chilling cold that seemed to envelop everything and numb my mind. Somehow, it's gone. Whisked away to be replaced by this. Brief flashes of sensation work their way through the blackness. Strong arms. Something rough brushing against my skin. The scent of pine, snow, and the crisp winter air. A hint of cigar smoke. Warmth fluttering against my neck. Then it's gone again, and I'm sucked back down into the darkness. I surface again to a soft feather pillow pressed to the side of my face, and that woodsy scent invading my every breath. Wait, something isn't right. The typical smell of greasy breakfast food being cooked at the diner next to my apartment is missing for the first time in years. And it's too quiet. The usual boisterous sounds of the busy street three stories below have been replaced by howling winds and something creaking outside. I roll onto my back and spread out, on a bed that's way too large. On my queen, my arms and legs can reach the sides, but this one has far more room. 